Hey, Jordan, congrats on the selection on uh, Sunday. That's great. Just, can you describe for me your five weeks that have kind of ensued since the Big 12 tournament? What's what's happened, what you've been doing? Yeah, you know, it was a lot of um, just being back home, um, you know, throwing light. We kind of took a step back throwing-wise, kind of let my arm, you know, kind of regroup in a way after the season, um, you know, lifting three times a week, um, then doing meetings with teams, you know, just talking – talking to scouts, talking to cross checkers, talk, talking to people in the front office. Um, you know, obviously things in the last like week or so picked up quite a bit. Um, you know, heard heard about the Cubs possibility uh, the night before was when we uh, mainly heard the interest. We knew we knew there was interest there, but, um, you know, it, it really became a real possibility the night before. And so we were, um, you know, I was super excited whenever, um, you know, I, I found out it was the Cubs, um, you know, organization with so much history, so much, um, you know, publicity, such a powerful fan base. You know, I'm really excited. Approximately how many teams reached out and contacted you? Um, do you mean like during the draft or before? Uh, or? Before or during the just the lead up draft process? <clears throat> yeah, so we heard from a couple leading up. Um, in like that kind of mid-teens area, um, there were some options. You know, we knew that we, we, we felt pretty confident in Chicago at 21. Um, and so we knew if it was just, you know, we just didn't know if someone was going to grab me before then. Um, but, you know, couldn't couldn't be happier that I that I uh, fell to Chicago, fell in their lap. Sure. And how many ballparks have you been to? How many big league ballparks? That is a great question. Um, trying to think <laughs> wait uh this afternoon i'll probably make two um colorado and i think uh texas the old ranger stadium globe life or not okay. globe life. was the old one globe life oh into the astros too so three three i guess okay so not to wrigley though i have not my mom has been to wrigley my mom raves about wrigley much like much like everyone does who has been there but you know um by the end of the week i'll probably probably end up up there. Thanks, Jordan. Yep. Go ahead, Cole. Hey, Jordan. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could kind of um, give us a little rundown of maybe what you have in store for you um, now that you've been drafted. I don't know if you had a chance to talk with them or not, but just kind of what's your plan now and, and where do you guys go from here? Yeah, so right now it's all about getting up to Chicago, um, getting the physicals taken out of the way, getting kind of all the technicality stuff done. Um, you know, hopefully hopefully everything goes smoothly through, you know, physicals and signing and all that stuff. We can get all that stuff out of the way and we, we can get to work. Um, you know, that's what I'm excited about. I want to I wanna get with them, see what their plan is for me, see what, you know, I need to really get to work on. And, you know, just hopefully, hopefully, like I said, all the all the kind of, annoying nonsense stuff gets out of the way early and you know we can we can get to work and get back to throwing so uh, i'm assuming then you don't necessarily know if you're going to be pitching um at all this season have they really talked to you about that aspect of it it'll be a um it'll be a discussion uh between me and the organization obviously ultimately it's up to the organization um you know what they see what their kind of plan is you know, they're going to bring me in, kind of see where I am health wise, do a bunch of tests, you know, see what I've been doing throwing wise. And, um, you know, they're going to create a plan for me, whatever they think is best. And, you know, whatever, whatever they want to do, I'm all in. And then what was just the night like in general for you being able to be in attendance for the draft? It was it was a really cool event. You know, I think this is definitely the best they've ever done it. I think it's something that's going to grow and grow and grow. Um, and I, you know, I strongly recommend anybody that, you know, has the opportunity to attend the draft to do it because it's such a cool, um, <clears throat> you know, scene to, to be there. And plus you're surrounded by big leaguers. You know, you get to meet guys like Nick Swisher, Fred McGriff, Ryan Sandberg, you know, all these guys that have that have, you know, has so much history in the game. And just to be around them was such a such a cool event. And, you know, I think Major League Baseball did a tremendous job with the draft. And then last question for me, I was just wondering if you could kind of talk about where the program at Kansas State is and what do you think that they're capable of, not just next year, but as the seasons go on with Coach Hughes at the helm? The, the program's in great hands. You know, they couldn't have 
Gene Taylor did a tremendous job in, in hiring the people that he did. Um, you know, they're, they're a, um, it's an, we kind of, we fell a little bit short, obviously of what our goal was. Um, I think COVID hurt us quite a bit because it didn't give us that, that kind of gelling period that we needed. You know, we kind of had some, had some learning curves this year, which was obviously less than ideal. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, you talk about the, the quality of recruit they're bringing in the, um, just everything that's that's going into the program you know I they they couldn't have hired anybody better and and that program is just going to keep trending up it's already trending up and it's just going to keep going awesome thanks jordan good luck the rest of the year thank you go ahead laney hey jordan first of all congrats um how does it feel to just not only be drafted but in the first round um, it's an honor, obviously, um, you know, it's, it's something to where, you know, it's kind of showing you what, what the hard work you put in all the, all the steps, all the stuff you've gone through throughout it. Um, you know, it's kind of showing you a little bit of it's paying off. Um, but also, you know, you can't celebrate for too long because now, now the real work starts, you know, now it's, it's back to the drawing board, back to trying to, um, you know, scratch and claw for everything, you know, because the, um, what, uh, you know, everything we kind of accomplished in college, it, you know, obviously it, it means something personally, but, you know, in a way it means nothing now, you know, you're back to the drawing board, back to, back to square one. So I got to get in there with the Cubs and improve myself and show them I'm a, I'm a valuable asset to that organization and, you know, kind of start, start making my way up. Mm -hmm. And you said that things really became a possibility at the Cubs the day before. So just what were your conversations like with them from when they first expressed interest to the day before? Yeah, you know, you, you start off and it's kind of all teams kind of like to keep their their cards close to their chest. And so, you know, we heard that the the Cubs had a lot of interest and, you know, I was really excited. So it was um, it was kind of like. It was like, you know, you you think if you get there, there's a really good shot. But then again, with how the draft unfolds and how these things go, you just never know. You know, anything could happen. You know, we saw a lot of kind of shakeups early in the draft. Um, you know, we had we had people talking to us saying, you know, after the first 10 picks, like, this is wild. We don't know how this is going to go. And, you know, it just how it shook out. And you seem like a cool, calm and collected guy. So what was just the anticipation like for you leading up to the draft, talking to all these teams? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was <clears throat> it was it was cool, calm and collected on the outside. But in the inside, it was uh, it was getting to me a little bit, you know, just kind of the, the antsiness of waiting. Um, and just just being excited to know, um, you know, I knew I knew God has his plan for me and I knew that, you know, he was going to put me with the right organization. It was just it wasn't so much worrying about like when it was going to happen. It was just, you know, I was so excited to know who and, um, you know, it was it was like a big surprise for me in a way. And and I loved it. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Austin. Uh, Jordan, I know when we spoke last summer, you mentioned your little league coach, obviously a former K-State draft pick. What have those conversations been like with Scott kind of going through this process and wearing his number along the way? Uh, it's been <clears throat> it's been incredible. Um, you know, he's he's told me, you know, how proud he is of me. Um, you know, and I've one one thing I've made sure he's known is that, you know, I'm, I'm not in this position without him um, and how much of an impact he's had on my life. Um, there's a lot of people that I think for that, you know, coach Hughes and, and Buck were here this weekend and I made sure they knew that, you know, I'm, I'm not in this situation without them. And, and I made sure I, I thank them and told them how much, how much they meant for my career. And, you know, just Scott's one of those guys that, that will always be one of the, one of the biggest people that molded me into not only the player that I am, but also the person. Um, and I'll, I'll always make sure he knows that. And last thing for me, I mean, looking back on this this pitching staff, we saw uh, the Mets take Carson a few days ago, and I think since we've been on the call, the Angels drafted uh, Eric Torres. So just really? looking, at, yeah, so nice. just looking at this staff, I mean, what made that group so special? I mean, it was it, iron sharpens iron. You know, it was a way where, especially in the fall, when when we're competing against each other, you know, you're competing against guys like Dylan and, and Kikoska and, and Nick Goodwin and, and guys like that every day. So it prepares you for the competition you're going out to see. You know, we saw, 
Um, you know, I, I loved, I know Carson and I loved matching up in the falls on the same days. Uh, we absolutely loved it. There was, there was no shortage of smack talk between the two of us. That's for sure. Um, and then, you know, it was kind of like, you know, if he goes out there and strikes out two, I want to go out there and strike out three. And it's just something where we just kind of, we, we fed off each other really well and we grew together really well. And, you know, it was something to where we, you know, we, we kind of fed information back and forth and, um, yeah. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Congrats again. Thank you. Go ahead, Mitch. Uh, hey, Jordan. Um, hot dogs or pizza? What do you prefer? Pizza. Deep dish now, apparently. Were you ever a Cubs fan at all growing up? I was so I wasn't like a solely Cubs fan, but I always anytime the Cubs were playing in like the postseason, I was rooting for them. So I was a big fan of the young players that they brought up. Um, I was a big fan of John Lester. Um, you know, I was my like my high school coaches were huge Cubs fans. And so when they were making that World Series run, you know, we show up to practice every day and we're talking about it at practice every day. And so, you know, I was I was 100 percent rooting for them in, in every postseason run they made. It's, it's a tough team not to root for. Um, and it'll 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 be a team that's uh, you know easy to root for now, especially. Uh, and my last one, you mentioned that that Pete and Buck were were both there in Denver with you. Um, in these last few days leading up to the draft, have they offered any kind of advice for you leading into uh, your professional career? Just just enjoy it, um, you know. Especially being out here in Denver while I'm here, you said you know they just said just soak it all in. Um, and they told me, you know, just, just be who you are, stay true to who you are, do what you do. You, you know, they said, you'll, have, you'll have no issues whatsoever. Just get in there, work your butt off and, and be ready to go. And, and that's what I'm going to do. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Hayden. Hey, Jordan, congratulations, man. Uh, kind of back home uh, here in Arkansas, just what's the reaction been from friends, family and Conway phone calls. And as you mentioned too, a lot of Cubs fans kind of here in that central Arkansas area. I mean, that, that's gotta be a really, really cool feeling and just your conversations with them. Yeah, it's, it, it's been awesome. Um, you know, I've, my, my phone definitely blew up um, after it happened. I, I think I had like 150 texts or something like that from, from people and, you know, just trying to, trying to get back to everybody and, and to thank them for their support. Um, you know, just just the outpouring of support from not only the people back home in Conway, you know, like you said, a lot of Cubs fans there. Um, one of the one of the coolest things I think that happened out of this entire experience is so when I when I was home, I was giving lessons um, to these kids and there was a uh, there, I was giving pitching lessons to a kid who was learning how to pitch for the first time. He was like an eight year old kid. And he asked me after the lesson, he said, he said, can you please go to the Cubs? And it was something that it was, it was such a cool moment for me, you know, being that it happened because, you know, he's, it's a kid that, you know, he, he looks up to all those guys and, you know, just kind of seeing that, you know, I'm in a position where I used to be that kid, you know, and now being in this position, it kind of shows how life comes full circle and um, it's, it's humbling for sure. I don't know why it was just this draft, but it seemed like Chicago had a flair for Arkansas kids, man. They draft you. They drafted two Razorbacks, you know, and obviously, um, you know, Travis Wood wins a World Series with those guys a few years ago, being a Bryant guy. I mean, that's just – I don't know what it is about the Cubs and Arkansas kids, but, I mean, is that kind of cool to know a couple of guys that played here in the state of Arkansas that you're probably going to come up with? Man, I'll tell you what. I was So I was, I was following the draft all, all day yesterday because I was so excited to know who the Cubs were going to take. Um, I mean, I was ecstatic when I saw them take Franklin and Opitz. Um, you know, I mean, I, I can't – I've watched, you know, both of them play for their – you know, a lot of their career at Arkansas. Um, and especially on the defensive end, you know, you talk about Christian Franklin out in the center, um, goes and gets everything. And then, you know, you it's, there's there's no secret to how good Casey Opitz is behind the plate. And, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to, to get to work with Casey to – to throw to him and you know I, I i can't wait to wait to work out with those guys thanks so much jordan congratulations man yeah thank you go ahead ryan hey jordan how are you today good how are you doing pretty well uh my question was you know with, with all that you accomplished while you were at k-state how much does it mean to be the, the highest draft pick they've ever had as well as being the first ever first round pick? 
Um, it, it means a lot. It does. You know, it, it shows kind of, you know, how um, I think the biggest thing it shows is, is like we talked about earlier, the, the trend of the program, you know, how it's, how it's trending up. You know, I'm, I'm the first, uh, first round pick, but I, I guarantee you I won't be the last. And I don't think it'll be long before we have another one. And, you know, it's something to wear, you know, it's an honor to be the first because I feel like, you know, when I came into that program versus when I left it, you know, I feel like I left it in 10 times better shape than we showed up to it in, um, you know, because I've always been taught to leave things better than you found them. And, you know, that's something I take a lot of pride in is the shape the program was in when I left versus when I got there. And then I don't know if you saw, I mean, Harold Reynolds, Harold Reynolds said uh, that he thinks you might be the first guy out of this draft class to reach the major leagues. Uh, I mean, that's very high praise, but I guess for your own expectations, how, how soon do you think you could reach it if you're being realistic about it? Um, you know, it's something to where I'm, I obviously set super high expectations for myself. Um, you know, I like to, I like to set super high bars to try and reach. Um, and so, you know, hopefully I'm going to, I'm going to obviously try and make it as quickly as possible. You know, um, my goal is hopefully by the end of the 22 season. Now, granted, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, there's a lot of levels to progress. There's a lot of steps, a lot of work to be done. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to set that bar super high. And if I get there, then awesome. And if I fall, you know, a little bit short and it takes a little bit longer, that's okay too. You know, but I'm a guy that sets super high goals. Um, I'll always do that. And, you know, that's, that's kind of where I, I look at it. Thanks so much, Jordan. Congratulations again. Thanks. Have a good one. Go ahead, Michael. In what area of your mechanics needs the most focus as a professional player? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if mechanics wise, we really have a whole lot of things to touch up on. You know, I think it's more of like enhancing the breaking balls, making sure those are, um, you know, just keep getting better and better. Um, mechanics wise, I think for the most part, um, we're pretty clean right now. I got to, you know, continue to, continue to work on uh, my hips getting through and, and my lead leg block. Cause that's something I worked on toward the end of my career that helped me a lot. So, you know, just kind of refining those things and just, just keeping, you know, keeping, keep sharpening those up is basically. And at what stage of your de development did professional baseball start becoming a possibility? Um, I think, you know, during my, my freshman year at Kansas State, you know, whenever I got there and, and really saw how I was able to um, compete at that level and go after those guys, you know, I really had a lot of confidence that I was like, okay, you know, this is a possibility for you. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot um, of steps to get there. But, you know, it's it's something that I'm, that I'm all in for. Thank you, Jordan. Yep. Uh, Mitchell's having audio issues, but he had a question I'll ask it for him. Um, just wants you to describe to Chicago, Cup, Chicago Cubs fans what kind of athlete that they're getting. I'm getting a guy that's a – they're getting a guy that's a big team guy. Um, you know, I'm going to do whatever whatever it takes for this team to win. Uh, I'm going to do whatever the organization requires of me and, you know, hopefully to get to Chicago as quickly as possible and, and, and help this team get back into the postseason and help get them back on that World Series stage. You know, that's the goal, um, you know, because that's that's in this sport what you strive for. You don't you don't strive for anything short of that. Um, and, you know, that's that's the steps we're, we're going for and, and that's what we're going after.